Yo, yo, so we are just off to go and see Bardi from Bard's Builds. She's a builder in Melbourne. We just got back from Sydney uh, doing the podcast there. So today we're going to go and catch up with Bardi. Um, pretty interesting stuff. She's obviously a builder. I believe she's working for herself now. And she's doing a lot of stuff in the mental health space and just looking after tradies. So this should be an interesting podcast. Please comment below if you've had an interaction with Bardi and let us know uh, your thoughts on the podcast. Appreciate it. Enjoy. Barty, thank you so much for coming in today. How was your commute? Commute was good. I pretty yeah. much just blasted tunes the whole way. Yeah, nice. So it was just me and a bit of Beyonce. Beyonce, <laughs> that was my next question. What do you like to listen to? So Anything. Beyonce. Yeah. I feel like I love anything. I feel I go through just every single genre. Yeah. Just, it depends, you know? Yeah, yeah. I feel like um, when people ask me, oh, what type of music to listen to, and I, I can't nail it down on one thing. I'm like, I like a bit of everything, so... I think it's, mix up the playlist. Yeah, it's good. And I, I don't know, I feel like if you just like one genre, are you really a music lover? Yeah, you're just a bit of a plain Jane. <laughs> yeah, you're a bit of a plain Jane. I love, um, I love remixes of like yeah. Aussie classics oh, yeah. on SoundCloud. I get on there. Nice. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's a guilty cool. pleasure. Um, let's start right from the start. Where does the name Buddy come from? Buddy actually, it's kind of a made up name. So it's not I was, a passport name, is it? A passport name. It's not on your passport. Yeah. Is it? That's my real name. No way. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's so, dive into that. <laughs> so my name, I was named after my mum's aunt, I believe it okay. was. And then just after I was born, she actually passed away. Sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, me too. I, I mean, I didn't meet her. Oh, no, yeah. I did meet her once. Yeah. Um, but after she passed away, everyone went to the funeral and her name was actually Marjorie. Marjorie. Yeah. So it was just a nickname. Yeah. And so it's kind of made up, I suppose. It's just, I was named after a nickname. Cool. That's all right. But it's it is name. name. It's pretty original. That's cool. Mm. Um, are you from a Victoria originally? Is this where you grew up? No. So mm. I grew up in northern New South Wales. Yeah. So my whole life grew up on farms, uh, on property. Yeah. And so country girl at heart, eh? Oh, yeah. Through and through. Yeah, like nice. you'll never take that out of me. Yeah. It suck. So four wheel driving is a big activity of yours. You like yeah, that? oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Camping, anything. I think honestly, anything country, I just mm. absolutely love. I find even living where I live now, it's not the city, but it feels super full on to me. Yeah. Even having um, which obviously privilege to say, but having neighbours like over the fence to me, yeah. I like look at them. And I think I could just like step in and have brekkie with you. Yeah, this yeah, is so close, random. Yeah. yeah, we've been staying in heaps of Airbnbs and like yes, one we had in Sydney. I could put your arm out the window and it's like you're almost touching the neighbour's house. Yeah, because I'm off a farm as well, so like oh, two thousand wow. acres, and then you're like, oh my gosh, the city's tough work. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when did you move into the city, and do you miss the country? Yeah, yeah. Every day I miss the country. I feel like the country is a really big part of who I am and I'm so grateful to have come from there because it's really I suppose grounded me into life and given me a big appreciation for just being able to be not in this, not mm. in the city. Yeah, um, it's a busy rat race life, life, lifestyle. So yeah. But I moved to Sydney when I was 18, uh, finished high school, moved to Sydney. So did you go to school in the country? Yeah, I went to oh, school. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, my okay, whole life cool. grew, up in the, grew up in the country and then Beauty. moved to Sydney when I was 18 to actually study at uni. Yeah. And that was, that was really hard. Like that gave me a full-blown culture shock. I yeah. think I always thought the world was as big as – you know your little country town yeah my little, of 1000 people <laughs> yeah my country town um so i moved and it just it rattled me i couldn't believe like walking in somewhere and you know someone doesn't say hi or you smile at someone yeah. that you think you're a freak big city life eh? yeah so are your are your parents like farming background and did they move with you or did they stay uh so all my family stayed i okay. grew up actually with 
uh, my mum and my sister. So I wasn't yeah. raised with my dad. Yeah. My mum was a teacher growing up. Yeah, nice. But like we're generational beef farmers. Cool. So my grandparents, their parents, their parents yeah, all nice. have been farmers. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how big the farm was in hectares or acres? I'm fascinated by it. I grew up, so the farm I grew up on was 100 acres. Yeah, nice. And then my grandparents and our family had like a couple of different farms nice, that they yeah. would have their cattle on. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Do you reckon growing up on a farm, because I grew up on a farm, so it's yeah. obviously very like hands on. Mm. Uh, is that kind of what got you into the trades, you think? Like got you started in building? Or was that maybe more after university or? Yeah, so I got started in the industry because while I was at uni, my dad lived in Sydney and yeah. he offered me a job as a labourer. Yeah, nice. So <laughs> Jeez, he put you right down the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how I got into it. And actually when I started, I Growing up on the farm, I think it gave me, like, grit and a mm. work ethic coming yeah, from the good. country. Like, I don't care about getting dirty. I love yeah. getting stuck in amongst it. Yeah. And it was just normal to me. I think that's just in my blood, especially, mm. like, women, hardworking women. Yeah, for sure. Like, my Chances grandma, on your hands, cuts and everything, man. yeah. My <laughs> great-grandma, I'd go around to her place, like, for a roast, and she'd be on the chainsaw at 80-something, <laughs> just, like, getting amongst yeah. it, just for fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've definitely come from really strong women and yeah. a strong family background of work ethic. Nice. Uh, but going into the industry, I had no idea about building. And I was – I just – I – thought well I may as well have a crack I was doing bar work and hated it yeah so when I first started I actually didn't enjoy building yeah it's pretty because... tough the first two years are definitely the worst oh. like you've got to have such a thick skin to get through your first two to three years that's the first thing my dad said to me when before I got out of the car he just said mate make sure you bring your thick skin today yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was like I was kind of like <laughs> what, what are you talking about yeah, <laughs> what? Uh, I grew up on the farm this is easy <laughs> yeah but I think I actually just had no idea about what building was even about. Yeah. I'd never been on site, didn't even know what trades were. Mm. You know, I probably thought a carpenter at that time laid carpet. Yeah. I just, <laughs> <laughs> my sister only realised like a year ago that's not what I do. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. So she doesn't have social media. <laughs> well, she does, but I think she just couldn't thought be. that's, couldn't figure it out. Oh, gosh, that's funny. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was really hard at the start. Uh, and I think it was through, I suppose, just continuing to show up and learn and understand what the industry was even about yeah. that I began to love it. And I just, I'm someone who, once I like something, I just want to know about it. And yeah, I nice. just got this like real passion for just going in every day and wanting to have a go and try this and know, like, I love to know things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Consume knowledge. Be yeah, I love, be be a, I love to be a sponge. <laughs> and I was in a really good environment for that. Yeah, cool. Yeah, can we uh, talk about that? Because I think that's um, the majority of the people that follow us are, yeah, maybe builders that are working for their current boss or just about to go out on their own. Um, so that's really good to be relatable. Mm. How was, like, your apprenticeship years and, like, toward, maybe towards leading to the end of your apprenticeship as well? Mm. Like, were you running your own jobs? What kind of responsibilities did you have? Yeah. So oh, my, I feel like my apprenticeship had so many different yeah. elements and levels to it. I... You know, I started out as a labourer and then that was the company that I started my apprenticeship with. And I actually went through a few different companies during my apprenticeship because, yeah. it, you know, COVID happened or um, there wasn't any work there. I was maybe in not a great environment. But yeah. starting my apprenticeship in the industry there were some great elements to it. And I think actually working with the people I did, uh, they really taught me a lot about life. Mm. But also because of, I suppose, the way trades are and a lot of the habits and things that come with it, going into the industry quite young, yeah. I felt like, I'd come from a difficult upbringing and 
going into that space, I had not really a sense of who I was. And I suppose I fell into a lot of the stereotypes of what a tradie was and found myself actually going down a pretty dark road with drinking and just not treating myself in a great way. Yeah. And the really tough thing about that was I was so young and did you start your apprenticeship when you were 18 no this was so all of this really started happening when i was laboring okay cool and then i started my apprenticeship about like two years later because i was at uni so i did two years at uni and then i dropped out yeah do you just realize uni you're like not for me i just realized i love the industry like i just realized i thought to myself, I found something I really love. Why why am I why am I not going to do that? And I was doing an art degree, so I was studying to be an artist. And it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I went in there as a painter and I was studying to be an artist. No way. Yeah. I thought I didn't know you could do a degree for that. I thought that would be like a yeah and paint and learn but yeah yeah so i was studying at the national art school mm-hmm. so i got um when i was in high school i'd got a few um like scholarships to go and study there and then i just loved it i loved painting i ended up going to printmaking yeah but art is something that i thought i can continue that later and it's always going to be a part of me. I'm a very creative person and I actually really see that the time I spent there, so many people think maybe that's wasted time, but it never has been because it brought me to where I am today. And I think being able to spend that time tapping into my creativity has actually really enriched my time in the industry yeah, nice. and the way I like the yeah. way I work, the way I build, the way I see things mm. and creatively problem solve. Yeah. Yeah. What was like the majority of your apprenticeship? Like, was it working, was it residential based only? Mainly? Like, did you do Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So all, pretty much all my apprenticeship was residential based. Renovations, new builds? But Renovations, new builds, nice. duplexes. Cool. Uh, the first project I went on, it was apartments, but yep. really like quite small, like yep. eight. Yeah. Uh, so I hadn't actually done any commercial work until yep. I qualified and moved to Melbourne. I see. So mm-hmm. certainly it was all renovations and residential strictly. Um, yeah. Cause yeah. And if you, I mean, we can get on that topic soon, but I reckon commercial was a lot more toxic than residential. Mm. I reckon that's where there's more people on site more strict deadlines i feel like money and budgets are tighter on commercial yeah Yeah. well you don't have in commercial i think it becomes you do become a lot more of a number and you don't have as much of that personal relationship for sure but it was really interesting for me with when i stepped into commercial i also stepped into doing site management pretty much straight away Uh, so you were kind of off the tool straight away Yeah, yeah so when i came into that stage it actually gave me the space to look at what kind of environment i wanted to create on my site and as much as i could i really tried to make that space somewhere where people really enjoyed coming to work and i never wanted people to feel alone in the problem solving side of things like if something would happen just cutting it off and being like okay cool this has happened Mm what what are our options here and going straight into that problem solving process and then going okay yep these are our options having that talk and then from there stepping straight into the action of fixing something Mm -hmm. and just really trying to take away that space where we're really stressing we're going oh my god what are we going to do because you can spend so much time in that space where you're just thinking about the thing that's gone wrong yeah and it's not beneficial at all and yeah you've got to come up with a solution i feel like people focus too much on the, on the problem, problem and blowing people up and getting aggressive and angry and Who it's cares? like it's done it's happened yeah <laughs> solution it, time exactly and 
that is one of the biggest things I see and it's just we try to like we want someone to blame and we want to do yeah, this yeah. and create this whole thing oh I'm so stressed I'm so stressed and it's just like okay what's done that's the past let's move straight into the present and how can we fix this work with a team and just get it done mm. and oh my gosh I feel so privileged to have worked with had the experience. people yeah had that yes, experience sweet. and the trades I got to work with so many of them finished the job and just said what a great time and experience they had uh, working with me. And it was just really nice. So, I mean, pretty much all of them I have great relationships with, even now. Like, yeah. It's just such a privilege. Yeah, good on mm. you. Did, so what kind of commercial projects were you working on? And I mean, that's pretty good that you had a bit of free reign to... I've done site management stuff mm. in there. Like you would just run like morning meetings or do health and safety, but obviously you're talking to all the trades one-on-one -on -one directly every day. Yeah. Um, but did you get a bit of free run? Like, do you want to talk about those commercial projects a little bit more? Yeah, a hundred percent. So going into it, I don't know. I'm very much someone I like, like I like responsibility. I like yeah. to take charge of a situation. It really like kind of lights me up mm. and it's not that I don't like working under anyone or like working as part of a team it's just I enjoy it I enjoy taking on responsibility yeah it gets bit me, of like a leadership role yeah it gets yeah. me excited good on you yeah, yeah. I just I don't know but I, love that, it. I think that's important because so many people don't want to do that stuff mm. so I did an Instagram video way back in my early days around you know there's kind of like a few pillars within the industry mm. and there's some people that just want to turn up and be like great builders. Yeah. Great carpenters, not talk to anyone, not deal with any bullshit and just build. And that's like amazing oh, because we need best. those people. Yeah. But then also for those people to do their job, you need like really good organizers, mm. people that can sort out all the logistics and do all the, you could say project management. Yeah. Um, you know, which is their pressure. And then there's people that love doing like sales and marketing and like dealing with you know, mm. KPIs and working to numbers. So <laughs> so you were definitely no. the leadership and organizer type. Yeah. I'll take sales because I love yeah. that. So yeah. Uh, I, and I think I'm someone I can communicate really well with people. Yeah. So I'm able to develop great relationships with my trades. And I think that's really important in the way a project is carried out. Yeah. You know, if you have all your trades they're coming on site, you don't have great relationships with them and everyone's kind of getting stuck into each other. People aren't working well as a, you want people to be working as a team. You want to be yep. building on that community. And I think when you step onto site in that management position, it's really taking responsibility of the role you play and setting a good example uh, every single day. So I really tried to do that every day, step on site with a good attitude and work in with everyone as a teammate, like be a real team player and making sure that people have what they need, that you're there to have conversations. But also I never say I know something if I don't. So yeah. if I'm working with my trades, it's if I don't understand something, it's going like, hey, I don't completely understand what we're doing here. And just bringing people in to work together, not so much being here and looking down, down and going, people, yeah. you work for me. Yeah. It's, having like we work together. together. Yeah. 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 Nice. So um, interesting thing I saw on your Instagram about the shift. Is, yeah. Did that kind of start from maybe stuff that you'd seen on commercial sites mm. in regards to suicide and mental health and stress and all of that? Can yeah. Talk about that. So the shift is so important to me because it's really come from my experience. As I was saying earlier, when I started in the industry and I was quite young, I went down a really bad road just with drinking, with my mental health. I had like a lot of stuff coming up for me and it led me to a place in my life where I actually attempted to take my own life. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Which looking back, I held it's something that I didn't talk about for a really long, long time. And I remember being really rocked by that. But also I didn't have a support network that I felt I could tap into at home, whether that was true or not, or yeah. in my mind. Uh, but also I was going to work every day 
and I'd really put this mask on to be able to go in and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm a shady, like I'm a tough ass, like, um, and the way people knew me, they didn't really know me. Yeah. It was something that I suppose a mask I developed to be able to go into that environment and feel like I was a part of something. Mm. And after that, I really changed my life. Like started doing a lot of different things to support myself. I went and got professional help and really started putting in those efforts. And as I did that, I was actually able to become more secure in who I was and I began showing up more authentically and that led me to having, I suppose, deeper conversations with the people I've worked with in the industry. And I really quickly realised that there were a lot of men because I've pretty much worked with only men. That's the truth. Yeah, it's a pretty male trait, like dominated trait for sure. Yeah, and I really quickly worked out that and began having these conversations with men who I really loved and respected um, who were carrying the weight of the world Mm -hmm. and maybe I was the only person who they had that conversation with and this was just a common theme that continued and continued and it wasn't so much that people didn't want to be doing better it was that there weren't really like further than that conversation they had no idea on what maybe getting help looked like or what a habit was in their life that they could change how uh, they could maybe start even checking in with themselves so I started an event where it was like it is completely free anyone can come and attend and really begin building on and looking at how I could help yeah and at the start I so I went and did my breathwork facilitators course so because that's something that really helped me and that really focuses on teaching people how to down regulate their nervous system quickly in any environment and what we really focus on at the shift is three key elements that has been that has been developed over time so those are building community so working whenever i take it out to maybe a site or a tape whatever it may be i actually try and develop the community that's already existing in the workplace or school whatever it is so it's nearly like team building but one of the biggest things is making sure that you're a tight-knit group that you can lean on the people around you and teaching people it's all it's great if we're starting conversations but it's also important that people know how to communicate and how to have these conversations yeah nice so that's the first element the second element is giving people real tools for life that they can implement in their life so not just in building outside yeah Yeah, yeah. well at any point so as i was saying with the breath work so teaching people how to use a technique to down regulate themselves that is something that you can do anywhere you can do it on your drive to work you can do it if you're having a stressful day at work you can do it to help you fall asleep at night yeah and giving people real things that they can take away and practice Mm. and then the third part we really focus on is teaching people how to actually check in with themselves how many times do we meet people and maybe they're going through something difficult they they're just not themselves and you go hey are you are you all right and they're like yeah yeah but asking it again yeah hey, really checking in exactly yeah. and but teaching people actually how to check in with themselves and have that moment where they go how actually am i feeling yeah like what what is going on for me and teaching people how to articulate what is going on for them what are 
you know, if someone's really stressed, well, what are the stresses? Um, and from the self-check-in, we set goals going forward as to how we can create that shift, yeah. you know, in the week ahead, in the month ahead, uh, what can we do to actually give ourselves what we need Yeah, and taking that real holistic look at well-being because it doesn't just come from, you know, if you're struggling mentally, well, are you hydrating? Are you eating well? Are you moving your body? Are you connecting with people in a way that's meaningful to you? Yeah. And just really taking that deeper look at our mental health, but our well-being as a whole, because it all plays such a big role. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's um, that's really interesting. Eh? Do you and it, like did that bring it on around like knowing? The kind of like the suicide numbers in construction like because that's a, that's a huge one eh? yeah i think it's i know it's bad in new zealand i don't know about australia's stats mm. but do you know what the stats are in australia yeah so every second day in australia we lose a construction worker to yeah. suicide yeah it's real bad eh? and if you this is like when i heard this statistic this got me especially being in the role of doing site management you think about every single day the things that you're watching with your trades to make sure they're safe. You think about all the swims you're signing, everything you're doing to keep your trades physically safe on site. Mm. So in Australia, trades are actually six times more likely to take their own life than they are to pass from an on-site incident. So you go, okay, (laughs) every day we go to work, we do all of these things. Health, to and safety, yeah. health and safety. Physical and, health and safety, yeah. yeah. We're doing these things every day when really the thing that is affecting trades most, mm. we are doing so little for. Yeah. And that's why I'm just so passionate about it. If I can help one person, if I can give someone one tool that stops them from going down the road I went down and the connection I have to the people I've worked with, you know, these men have changed my life. They've taught me what it looks like to be a good person. They've taught me everything I know in my trade. And to think of even one of those people that I hold so much respect for to be in a space where they might not get out of and to really struggle, yeah. it just, it genuinely breaks my heart. Yeah. But it is also the fire underneath me because. I don't want that. I don't want that to be our future. Mm. And change needs to happen and people talk about change a lot, but there doesn't seem to be things actually taking place. Yeah. That's a good approach. I think more people need to look into that stuff. I know there's a few companies in New Zealand doing it as well, but I could Mm. see more people like yourself doing that. Nice. What's your current day-to-day look like? Like, what are you doing? What's your current sort of Monday to Friday work week? And do you have any projects you're working on at the moment? Yeah, so at the moment, I'm in the most random, not random, I've actually, like, I'm someone, I'm very thought out in everything I do. And when, you know, I moved to Melbourne just over 18 months ago. You became a coffee addict. I've been here for so okay. long, <laughs> so long. <laughs> yeah. Bad. Nice. Um, but I moved down here about 18 months ago with the intention to buy and renovate. Beautiful. Uh, and it is just unbelievably expensive everywhere to buy. <laughs> but I ended up buying uh, down the peninsula. Absolutely love it. And in the time of buying, I... That's when I went into site management. I was doing all of that stuff and really built myself up so that I could move into a space where I could go full on renovate my house and also work on the shift. So right now, yeah, so right now I'm full-time renovating and working on the shift, which has been amazing. So the renovations are hectic. Yeah. <laughs> Just because of me. Like, How are you splitting your hours at the moment? Like, what are you doing? Normal kind of work hours renovating or? Yeah. So, yeah. 
this has been the biggest thing. I have to keep myself in order. So still every morning I wake up early, I go to the gym and then I'll go to yoga nice. and then I'll start my work day. So I still work myself in with um, regular trade hours. But I suppose I'm pretty bad. I need to create better boundaries with work because I will find myself working till like late at night just because mm. I get – so carried away. You get in the zone. Eh? I get flow state. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I do. I really do. So for me, every single day looks a bit different depending on what I have on. Like for today, yep. for instance, I'm here, I'm doing this podcast. Yep. Then I've got one meeting after this. I'll go home. I'm going to work on my Renault's until yep. about three. Then I have another meeting at three. Uh, from there, I'll probably organize a few things. Mm. And then this weekend, I'm going to try and check out. Yeah, nice. Yeah, um, it's important. Eh? So, so important, but something I'm very, I'm working on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it can be hard. What's your renovation looking like at the moment? Like, you want to give us a brief what you're doing? <laughs> no, nah, let's, let's get into it. You're extending full internal gut. Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. In the kitchen? Yeah. So, at the moment, I tell you what, it is like really cold in Melbourne at the moment. Oh, it's and it's freezing. Yeah. Jacket it up, long sleeves. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Freezing. <laughs> and I'm so I'm living in my house and renovating it at the same time. So right now, um, so far, a fair bit of my place has been I've already gutted a lot of it. I have one room that is it's got like the ceiling down. I had to reframe all the ceiling. Yeah. Um, but I've added an ensuite into nice. my house. There's a few rooms that have changed around. Um, redoing the kitchen. Nice. Most of the kitchen is actually redone. It's more so just finish it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a builder's house is never finished. <gasps> Oh, That's you to the it's, it's never, it has never been so true. Yeah, yeah. And you just, oh my gosh, it's like, oh my gosh, I just live on site constantly. Yeah, trady like, luck. It's, you know, I walk, I walk down the hall and I've got like timber stacked up, I've got yeah, this yeah. here. I'm just, yeah. I shake my head at myself every single day. Yeah, it's a cool project that you're doing though. I feel but like it's it, awesome. I, I feel like the it. people that love building, that's always the dream. Do your own projects. Oh. It's always do your own projects. It is a dream. So you don't have a client. This yeah. is, it's the funniest thing to, I'm really big on looking looking back and actually understanding that right now I really am living out such a big part yeah, of something sure. I've dreamed. And so many people want to do Yeah, that. and so many people want to do and really just to get here working unbelievably hard and trying not to get stuck in that space where I work so hard that I can't reflect and mm. that I'm always thinking about the next thing. And to be in this space now, it has been such a big dream because it really is – bringing together that creativity that I love so much about myself and actually coupling it with the real skills that I have. Yeah. It's the ultimate yeah. to do it. Finishing and, your arts degree, some would say. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'm not going to actually finish it. Yeah. <laughs> but with, the, with the design. The piece of paper. Yeah. Yeah. But 100% cool. and it just – it's like the coming together of everything and just go show that no time is wasted um, nice. in our lives. Uh, what do you, what's the plans with that? Are you going to live in it? Are you going to sell it? What's the plans when you finish? Ooh, tough question. It's a really tough question and it's a really hard question. And I think just as so many things have changed, the market's changed. Yeah. So I'm actually – not sure. Okay. I think it really depends on how things change even for myself. So many things are changing even within my life. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Yeah. I feel like you might get attached to renovating your own house and then you're just going to live in it, which is not a bad thing. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe I'll finish it and I'll not be able to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, I'll be like, oh, I haven't, you've given me hell. Yeah. What's like the plans or outlook for you for the next like one to two years in regards to building, work, the shift? Mm. What's kind of your, do you have a bit of a map? Yeah, 100%. I have a map. I really would love 
to be in a space where I can continue working for myself, especially, mm. you know, renovating, doing those things. I think carpentry and building is such a big part of who I am and yes. something that I really enjoy. So I don't want to lose that aspect for myself. I really see myself continuing to step into working on the shift, doing that thing. That to me is, I believe that is my purpose. I believe that everything I've experienced in my life has brought me to a point where I want to do that and I want to continue creating that future for the industry. So with the shift, my plan is to take that into tapes and continue to bring these skills to the industry, but from a place where we're developing these skills from a younger age and changing the industry at that real grassroots yeah. level. And I think it's really important that we work so that we're not reactive. We're actually stopping things in their tracks. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. What do you reckon is um, something or like a skill or, you know, a set of skills that is totally undermined within tradespeople? Something that people don't appreciate enough or like clients don't see or outside people don't see within the trade. Something I would say that I really appreciate in trades people and I don't think, I actually don't believe people in trades get enough credit. I also think that coming into the industry, I held this outlook that trades were for people who weren't really smart and who maybe dropped out of school. Yeah. And coming into them now, the experience I have, people I've met in the industry are the smartest yeah. people I've ever met. And I really believe that just the ability tradies have to have so many different things on the boil to be so multi-dimensional in the way crazy, that they yeah. work. It's crazy. Logistics, Le planning, everything. stress, problems, being good with their hands. It's insane. Everything. When yeah. you think of a builder and when you think of a builder, they are doing everything. Like they are doing logistics. Yeah. They're also the person when anything goes wrong that everyone's calling every trade. Yeah. They are taking, they're creatively thinking about how something can be problem solved. They're dealing with the money. They're dealing with all of their employees. Like they do everything and people really don't understand what it takes to actually be in the industry and to do it well. Yeah. And so I think anyone going out and doing their own thing, especially when you start off in the early days and they always talk about wearing all these hats, but mm. you're literally like a lawyer from contracts yeah. and then you're an accountant with finance yeah. and then you've got to be good at, you know, pricing stuff up yeah. and making sure you're getting paid correctly. Mm. And then you've got to build it and then you've got to do logistics. And yeah. How do you find managing sub trades on your own build? Do you enjoy that side of the business? I, lo I love it. Subbies and other people. I love yeah. it. I love. Well, that was your background. From yeah. Commercial side. That management. my yeah. background, but I just, that's what I love. I love yeah. developing um, good relationships with people. I love working with other people. I love learning from other people. Yeah. So I feel like working with sub trades only makes my life richer and helps me build up my knowledge more. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, can we talk about the reality show, The Bridge? Yes. Can we talk I mean, about your experience with that? Yeah, we can. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Let's dive into it. What do you mean about? Um, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, what was it like firstly being on the show and then uh, taking it out as a winner? That's pretty cool. Yeah, so being on the show yeah. was being on the show was insane. Yeah. Is, like, it, is it scripted or is it all real? No. Okay, cool. It's not scripted. I haven't seen it, so I'm it's just checking it. Definitely edited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it is not scripted. Yeah. Okay. And because I'm someone, if I do something, I do it 110%. Yeah. I was like full in on it. So even when the bridge yeah. would do something, like some big event would happen, like I'm not, you're not there thinking, oh, this is a show. You're thinking, this is my life. Yeah. yeah this yeah. is what's going down. Like, <laughs> you know, me waking up in the middle of the night, like taking my sleep mask off and the it's bridge is on content. fire. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, but. 
I really went on the show with this intention. I was feeling just stagnant. I was like, yeah, I just want to grow. I just want to like really push myself. Yeah. And I don't think I realized how much I would be pushed to really grow. And every single day I, like I went on the show thinking it was going to be filled with tradies. (laughs) Not to go on there and like as an apprentice and go on and be like, oh, yeah, so there's me and there's a mechanic. And no one else had any trade experience. Trade experience. Building experience, yeah. But people are looking at me and they're going, <laughs> yeah, so what do we do? Yeah. And I'm thinking. Usually well, I ask this guy. <laughs> yeah. No, well, I was thinking to myself, I'm, well, I'm, I do residential building. I'm not out here building bridges out of logs. <laughs> I don't know what you think. <laughs> I'm not an engineer. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so it really pushed me and it pushed me to really see the value in myself and see myself as a leader. Yeah, nice. And I ended up getting voted into being like the leader. Yeah. And there's those leadership oh, qualities. Oh, I was out. I was stressing. I was just like, oh, can I do this? Can I do this? But I did and I just felt like I really led in my own way and it was really empowering and I get really empowered seeing other people push themselves and grow. Yeah, nice. And just having that experience was incredible. Yeah. I loved it. How did you get uh, opted in for that and what has come off the back of that? Have you had other opportunities? Yeah, so how was honestly they just called just me out? on Smoko one day. Yeah, they it. just reached out to me what and What were you having for Smoko? Do you remember? Not a pie and a vegan girl, eh? A what? Pie and a vegan. No. It's, it's, it's classic smoker. Oh man. <laughs> No, I can't remember. It was probably something. Sushi I, and a coffee? It would have been packed lunch. Packed lunch? No. It would have been packed yeah. lunch. So you prep lunches? Yeah, yeah I prep lunches. I, I would have probably bought a coffee. Yeah, nice. But they reached out and I was, as I said, I just thought, why not? I'm yeah. a why not person. Yeah. And I, if something makes me uncomfortable, I think, well, it's probably worth doing. Yeah, it's good for you. Yeah, it's good for me. <laughs> Uh, off the back of it, I went through a hectic time because on the show, the way things were edited, obviously I end up winning the show. Yeah, and congrats. Yeah, I I do take the money. Yeah. So there was quite a bit of money. And what gets cut out is because you have to go around and say, uh, you know, this is – if you're going to, before any votes happen, say what you do with the money, if you would take it and, um, or if you would share it, whatever. Yeah. And as we go around the circle, because I felt in myself, I was like, I think maybe, I was like, I think I could win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I knew in myself that I would want to take the money. Like I didn't come home a lot and I knew that was an opportunity for me to change my yeah. life. Yeah, cool. And as we went around, I thought, well, if I'm going to win, I want to do it honestly. So I said, honestly, I would take the money and this is what I would do. This is what it would mean to me. And everyone else had said, no, they'd split it equally. Ah, yeah. So in that moment, <laughs> yeah, in that moment, I thought, uh, well, I'm not going to win. And I did end up winning. And there was this moment like just before I won and I remember sitting there and I thought, it's really weird. I believe for things to happen in our life, we have to actually believe that we're worthy of it happening. Yeah. And I actually sat there and I thought, you know what? I actually believe that I do, I am deserving to win. Yeah. And I've worked for this not just on the show, but in my life. And, yeah, I ended up winning. And I took the money. I gave someone 20 grand on the show who I felt like really – everyone's deserving. At the end of the day, everyone's deserving of money. We all work to it as a common goal. And when I came out of the show, it was clipped in a way that to keep the suspense – 
they didn't say what I would do with the money. Yeah. So from oh, a see, yeah. from a perspective that you watch, it looks like I blindside everyone, <laughs> and all this these things happen in the media. Where then I was getting like death threats for a really oh. long time, and people just saying like how fake I was, that I was a liar, that I was this, and that was really hard as someone who just wants people. Yeah. to like be happy or yeah i feel like you're not that kind of yeah. Person, so, yeah and that was hard for me but it's also made me someone who i am um, if i understand why i do something if i believe in why i do it if i know that my heart's in the right place and what my motives are yeah then that's all i need and now the opportunity that doing the show has given me is that yeah, now cool. I am doing everything that I want to do. Would I have even had the opportunity to have the space to create the shift? It, it wasn't mm. for that, probably not. So yeah. just understanding that things do come up that are really difficult and they're hard to process, you know, people sending you death threats and questioning your character. It's yeah. hard, yeah. but it's also made me who I am today. So for it, I'm grateful. Good. Um, we'll wrap this one up here. It's been great. How can people find the shift? So you can find the shift going on Instagram. It's yeah. the shift.au. Okay, cool. And yeah, please follow along. I'm awesome. excited. Hopefully I get to come to NZ and do one. I'll send you a to-do list for sure. We can sort that out. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for having Appreciate me. It. Awesome.